Hi everyone, this is Kamiko Kali of Wild Flourish and this week I wanted to share with you a craft that we're doing using supplies from our March homeschool haul which I shared a couple days ago. So this week we are making our day of the week gnome peg dolls for our perpetual calendar. So I already picked up these wooden blocks at a Goodwill for like $3. They have this little stand and everything. It's very cute. Uh, mermaid themed. So for children, my son is only four years old and so for preschoolers uh, or children younger than the age of seven, the days of the week and months, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, March, April are very abstract concepts for them. So it's helpful to have something more concrete for them to kind of align with the rhythms of the day and the week and the seasons and months as they're passing by. So in the Waldorf tradition, there's a color assigned to each day of the week. So I've started off with these wooden peg dolls that we got in our bag from the hall. I chose the largest size um, male peg doll general peg doll design because uh, I figure they're going to be I wanted them to be outstanding enough on top of the uh, days of the week and I wanted it to uh, be very sturdy so I chose selected this size for all of them and then these are the days of the week uh, Sunday is associated with the color white and also the the sun, astrologically, and the grain of wheat. This one is Monday, and it's the color purple, as well as the moon and the grain of rice. This one's Tuesday, it's red, Mars, and barley. Wednesday is yellow, mercury, and millet. Thursday is orange, it's Jupiter and rye. A Friday is green, it's Venus and oats. And then Saturday is blue and of course the planet Saturn and also corn. So this color coding will kind of help for my son to identify not only what day it is, but some of the, uh, observe, help him to observe the energies of the day and anticipate of some of the grains that we'll be incorporating into our meal plan that day. So I started off with the unfinished wooden peg doll that I got in the bag and then painted them according to their day of the week using these opaque watercolors uh, that I picked up from Ikea. You can also use the Lyra or Pelican brand are uh, very well reviewed. And then I also use some of these uh, skin tone colors to make them multicultural. And then next up, the opaque uh, watercolors leave kind of a chalky texture. If you can see the blue rubbed off on my thumb a little bit. So the next step I'm going to do is I picked up this organic uh, wood polish and it's a really simple recipe. They just mix beeswax, olive oil, and love. And this seals and protects the wood. And it's non-toxic, so it's great for uh, infant toys. If you have a child that's uh, teething, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to paint underneath the wood still, but um, unless you had a more eco-friendly paint. Um, but it was good to seal the wood and make it more smooth and then you can also even use it uh, for your own skin, for your chapped lips or hands, etc. So the next step is to just take a little bit, a little bit goes a long way, and then just rub it all over the peg doll. And then once it's sat in for a little bit, I can also uh, buff it to just kind of wipe off any of the excess.
then now I'm moving on to making their little caps. So I got these felt sheets as I shared in the haul. I picked the colors that I thought matched uh, the painted body as close as possible. And then to measure out these little felt pieces, I lined it down and then I used the can of wax to measure the curve. And I just approximated how tall the length from the top of the felt to how tall I wanted it to be on the peg doll. Centered it and then just traced a line along on the felt and cut it out and then repeated that for each of them. Um, after the first one, I just measured it onto the felt so that way I can make sure that they were uniform and would match. Okay, so the felt strips obviously have the marking line that I did with the colored pencil. So when I start to sew them, I'm gonna fold it in half and then I started my thread at the top and then spiraled down what is going to be the back of the hat and then here's an example of one I did for the green so far and then I just wove it in and out to uh, give a rim for the bottom of the hat and then strung the end of the string back up to the top did a little knot and then has like a tiny little tassel so now I'm working on the red one and again, just spiraling, start at the top, poke it through the needle. Um, and I'm just using some embroidery floss, spiraling down the bottom. We'll do the rim and I'll repeat that for each of these hats. Okay, so here we've completed the hats for each of our little gnome peg dolls. I was debating about adding uh, capes as well, uh, but they didn't quite fit. And I also want to be able to write the letters on the stomach of the um, of each of the dolls. So having a cape kind of obstructed that, or I'd have to write them really tiny. I also considered cutting a piece of felt and then wrapping it around to be like their pants. Maybe I could even uh, hem the top just like I did on the bottom of the cap so it looked kind of like a belt. But overall, I decided that they look best just keeping them simple like this. So for each of these caps, some of them I did a contrasting color like this blue, green, and orange and the purple one, uh, mainly just because I didn't have an exact matching embroidery thread to match the felt and then some of them turned out with a thread that was pretty spot on the red and yellow and white okay so the next step is going to be to adhere the caps to the peg dolls so I've got my hot glue gun here and rather than estimating where uh, the cap will land on the head, I'm going to apply the glue to the interior of the felt, acting fast because it will cool quite quickly. And then I'm gonna have it tilting just a little bit back towards the back of the head so that and so that it's at an angle and the face isn't too obstructed. So here's the first one. Now I'll let that cool for a second, and we'll do this next one. So 
So again, applying the hot glue to the interior circle and then placing it on the head. No, not right now. Babe. Okay, so I decided not to go with the capes or any additional clothing. I think that the caps are enough. And in lieu of using a the initial letter for each day of the week, uh, since there's some duplicates, like there's S for both Saturday and Sunday and T for both Tuesday and Thursday, although I could do a second letter, but just to keep it a little uh, cleaner and also to build more association with instead of a specific letter for each day, really focusing on <laughs> my little ones playing in the background. Um, instead to focus more so on the color and the planet associated with the day, I decided to do the astronomical symbol for each of the planets. So again, Sunday is white and the sun, purple, Monday, moon, Tuesday, Mars and red. Wednesday is Mercury and yellow. Thursday is orange and Jupiter. Friday is green and Venus. And Saturday is blue and Saturn. So thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And hopefully we'll get to show you how they look. All, and they're all set up on our nature table. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we really appreciate your support. So please like and subscribe and comment down below with any feedback, tips, or questions and anything that you'd like for us to share in an upcoming video. We'll see you next time.